Hello everybody, welcome back to another Anita Good Design video. My name is Brooke and I am your creative content writer, creative associate, and today, your seamstress. So for today's tutorial, I am going to teach you how to piece together your printed clutch. Now, the options are endless when creating your clutch. You can mix and match different design elements within the collection. You can use the same one like I am going to below, and you can also have a plain quilted black. The choice is yours, whatever you desire, have fun with it. So what we're going to do is I'm going to have you follow your tutorial and I want you to create two embroidered quilt blocks, okay? So we're gonna start with these two blocks and we're going to face them right sides together. Now once you have paired them right sides together, take your ruler and starting from the top, you're going to measure down three inches. Now you're measuring down three inches so that you can create a comfortable opening for your clutch. And I'm using three because I'm going to act as if I'm using this hardware over here. So your measurement may vary. Keep that in mind. So once you have measured three inches down, you're going to start from your pinpoint and you're going to follow the stitch marks down. You're gonna hit the corner and you're gonna turn and you're going to follow back up to the other pin. You're going to want to leave that three inch space from the top unsewn. Don't forget, once you hit your pin points, to backstitch. Now that's crucial, so when you're flipping your design inside out, you want to make sure that nothing rips, pulls, tears. You want to make sure that it's intact and it's ready to go. Once you have done this step, you're going to repeat it with your lining. Now I chose to do a funky dark colored lining. Um, I prefer to use dark. I feel as though if you use a light colored one, you can see all of your chaos and mess from carrying around your essentials. So I chose to go with a cork-like cotton fabric. Now for this design, I would recommend using a cotton as it is a good, durable, flexible material that is super easy to sew with. Um, but as I said before, when it comes to your fabric options, the choice is yours. So we are gonna go ahead and insert our block into the machine, starting at our pinpoint. Now, as you can see here on your block, you have two lines. You have the tacking stitch for your batting and you have the tacking stitch for your base fabric. You're going to want to try and make sure that you meet in between those lines so that you do not see your thread when you flip your design around. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to start. And you're just going to stitch all the way down. And I like to pause it on the corner so I can lift my presser foot and turn. And you can look as you go to make sure that your lines are matching up. And you're going to continue this on all three sides. Again, here I am stopping at the corner, lifting my presser foot, turning, placing it down, and starting again. And once you've reached your pin, you're going to stop and you're going to do your back stitch. And sometimes I like to go forward as well. So once you've had that, you can trim your thread. Now we are going to start on your lining. So again, if you haven't already, we're gonna go ahead and we're going to mark three inches down. Now, as far as measurements go for your lining, you can follow the guide in your tutorial or cut them the same amount or the same size as your quilt block. We're going to repeat the process by starting at our pinpoint for our lining. And keep in mind, our original 
quilt block has a half inch seam allowance. So we can go ahead and start sewing that. Start on one side. Once you hit the corner, you can stop if you prefer. Lift your presser foot, put it down, and repeat the process on all three sides. You can speed it up a little bit. Lift your presser foot up, turn, put presser foot down to finish it off. And then don't forget to backstitch. And there you have your lining and your base material. Now, once you have your quilt blocks, already, you're going to flip it inside out, leaving the lining as is. So you have your quilt block here and you have your lining here. I personally like to iron mine, so I like to keep it nice and flat. And then what you're going to do is you're going to insert your lining into the clutch Now, the other options are up to you. Personally, I like to fold in my edge to have a clean finish. Now, this may not matter as you're about to put hardware on it for the next step. So, the choice is really yours, but for preference wise, I like to fold my edges in. So, I'll match the corners of my clutch, fold in the fabric, and I will stitch those together. I will top stitch them or you can hand stitch, whatever you prefer. If you would prefer to not see the seam, or if you would like to do a decorative top stitching, that choice is yours. So once you have gotten to this point of your clutch, it is now time for the hardware. Now again, there are so many options when it comes to hardware. Uh, we chose a modern sleek look with a clasp, or you can go for more of a vintage style you can attach a chain, and you can also hand stitch it. So for this one, you would have to hand stitch. For this one, it would require screws and a screwdriver. So here you can see the hand stitch technique. This is one of our mini sizes that will also be available to you. You can see we used a kiss clasp, and we lined it with this fun green decorative cotton. Another fun way to use your quilt blocks is to add embellishments. We added our modern clasp. We did a batik lining. For this project, we used linen. Choose your fun embroidery threads and your decorative beading. And you could even add a chain to make it a purse. So that's all we have for today. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial on how to put your clutch together. Thank you for joining me.